So now we'll finish this chapter off by taking a very little bit of time to talk about thiols and sulfides. Uh, now one quick note, thiols and sulfides are very often omitted from the curriculum by professors and or textbooks. So uh, this may or may not be something you're responsible for, but I'm going to cover all my bases here. Uh, now a thiol has an SH group. It looks like an alcohol, it's just the sulfur analog of an alcohol. Uh, and as the main functional group, we will name them very similarly to an alcohol. Uh, just instead of the simple oal suffix we'd see in an alcohol, we use the entire thiol suffix uh, for thiols here. And so in this case, first thing you'll do is number the longest chain the SH is attached to to get the SH the lowest possible number. So here it's attached to uh, carbon number one. And so we'll say one dash propane. Instead of saying propanol, like for an alcohol, we're going to say propane thiol, but since thiol begins with a consonant, we'll actually keep the E just uh, exactly the opposite of what we would do with an alcohol. With an alcohol, all ends with or starts with a consonant or starts with a vowel, so we drop the E, but with thiol beginning with a consonant, we'll keep that E right there. So this is one propane thiol. You can also put that one in the middle of the word right before the thiol suffix. So we could say propane dash one dash thiol. And both of these are acceptable. Uh, now, if your thiol is not the major substituent, like we've got down here, we've got both an alcohol and a thiol, and the alcohol is given higher priority in organic chemistry. So in this case, with the alcohol getting higher priority, one, I want to number the longest carbon chain to make sure he gets the lowest number, and two, I'm going to name this as an alcohol, not as a thiol. Uh, and so in this case, our thiol is just going to be named as a mercapto substituent. So being the substituent, it's what we name first, so we'll say three mercapto, and then in this case we can say uh, one propanol or propane one alls, both are acceptable. I'll put the one propanol, and again we also could have had the same start, but finished it off with propane dash one dash all. Both of those would be acceptable as well. But the big key here is that uh, when the thiol is not the most important functional group, it's named as a mercapto substituent. So the synthesis of thiols, so we make them via SN2 reactions. It is total review. The big deal here is that SH minus here has to be your nucleophile. And it's just simply going to come in and do backside attack, kick off the leaving group, and now you've got your thiol. So total review, I don't want to spend a lot of time going through this here. So we've only got really one major reactions of thiols, and that's oxidation to form what's called a disulfide. Sometimes you're called disulfide bridge uh, in the context of protein structure. Uh, so in this case, you've got two thiols, and you've got to have two, or at least you've got to have a large uh, dithiol, maybe. Uh, but these two thiols, under oxidizing conditions, you had an oxidizing agent, uh, will join together and form a disulfide bond right there. Uh, mechanism here is not super important. A uh, variety of different oxidizing agents that might be able to pull this off, and it is completely reversible. You can add a reducing reagent and convert it right back to two separate thiols. So this has some biolog biological relevance. So talked about earlier in protein structure. So it turns out cysteine. So cysteine here has a sulfhydryl group, and under oxidizing conditions, you can form that disulfide bridge right there. So, and then under reducing conditions, you can break it apart. So, and this has some relevance uh, in a lot of different biological contexts. Uh, we use it in biochemistry quite frequently, uh, but if you are ever one who's ever gotten a permanent, a perm in your hair, I get them all the time, uh, but if you've ever gotten a perm, what they do is it turns out your hair, its structure is often held together by these lovely disulfide bridges right here. And so what they'll do is they'll add a reducing agent into your hair that breaks them apart. And so it kind of breaks apart some of the uh, protein structure of your hair follicles and stuff. And what they'll do is then they'll shape the hair exactly the shape they want, and then they'll go back and add an oxidizing agent back into your hair, forming new disulfide bridges, and therefore kind of like freezing your hair in place. Uh, of the new shape and structure they wanted it to have. So kind of some uh, relevance in the world of biology as well as cosmetology.